Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Nunley. We're going to get going here in just about 30 seconds. Okay, welcome once again to this weekly live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we jump into today's charts, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And uh, most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So, for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Uh, after I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase and cycle changed, I began to average down into losing positions, eventually giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process oriented and you have a professional trading mindset, you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of an individual trade or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered positive annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for markets that I'm actively tracking, and I share those through the Tickmill TradingView account. And what I'm going to do for you guys here is I'm going to post a link into the chat for those that are interested in following along with those daily trade setup videos. Just posted that into the chat for you. Uh, I also run uh, Tickmill's rapidly growing email strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market trading levels for the cash trading session for the S&P 500 
giving my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 4,000 points of profit since we launched the group last April. The second tick mill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The tick mill futures telegram trading group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live market commentary during the opening hour of the New York cash trading session where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets, and importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you guys a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. I'll tell you what I'll do, actually. I'll put the link for the, uh, the Facebook group into the chat as well. Anyone who wants to join that, you just simply send a request and I'll add you to the group and you can access my daily trade plan there for the S&P 500 or the E-mini futures contract. Um, before we jump into the charts, just a little bit of housekeeping. If anyone has a question or you, uh, or you are looking for me to take a look at the uh, a chart that I don't cover in uh, in my deck here, then uh, feel free to uh, type any question into the chat box or um, type the instrument name into the chat box as well. And ideally the time frame you're looking at and I'll give you a view uh, at the end of uh, my presentation. Okay, so let's start with the S&P 500, the E-mini futures contract. And uh, we are looking at a potential double bottom scenario here. Um, for those who, who are here on a, a regular basis, you're probably aware that I was looking for one more new low in terms of the, the S&P 500, at least a, a new low uh, below the June low. Uh, statistically speaking, in down years, uh, when, uh, when the market is, uh, is in decline, it's very unusual uh, from a statistic perspective uh, for the markets to make a, a trading low during the summer months. So we're anticipating that as we head into the autumn, we'd see a new low. We've got that now yesterday, and we have got a pretty decent outside reversal pattern that developed yesterday as well, uh, taking out prior two days of range. And we are currently consolidating at about 50% retracement of yesterday's range. So uh, for me at this stage, as I go into today's cash session, I'll be sharing uh, the trade plan in the, uh, in the Facebook group, but ultimately I'm going to be looking for long positions through yesterday's high, uh, looking for a swing trade scenario, certainly thinking about a retest of this weekly trend line resistance from below. So that would take us back up into the 3630 area. There is a gap that uh, will likely be filled at 36.49. Uh, so that's another level I'm paying attention to, but I'm looking ultimately the three-way corrective move to take us back into test this internal trend line resistance uh, into the 3,900 area as the, uh, as the next upside objective in terms of the futures. Now, if I get in today on the swing trade on the daily time frame, then in terms of invalidation for that trade, uh, any new low today would take me out of that position and invalidate the idea that we're going to uh, we're going to extend and we're likely then are going to uh, continue to the downside uh, would be the thesis there. So I'm um, paying close attention to that uh, 37.60 area today as we head into the New York cash session. Moving to the NASDAQ, similar scenario here. We have double bottom in play. NASDAQ traded actually I, into that uh, equality objective. When I talk about an equality objective, what I mean is equal legs in terms of market move. So from that 1300 level, we were looking for 11,200 as an equality objective. So equal legs. We got that and uh, saw a nice outside reversal there. So similar story for the NASDAQ today. Any move through yesterday's highs, I want to be on, on the long side. First target is going to be this high volume area, 11,900, and then on to trend channel resistance, 12,150. Similar idea here, if we're playing this as a swing trade, uh, looking for a multi-day advance, then uh, the invalidation point or the stop for me would be below today's low 
if we get traded in on the long side. Looking at the Dow Jones, uh, the Dow traded uh, meaningfully below uh, its due low. And uh, similar to the other indexes, we've seen a nice uh, outside reversal yesterday. So we've got some nice momentum divergence as well. Again, for those who are here on a weekly basis, you'll know that I would not, I, I don't trade counter trends unless at a minimum, uh, we want to have a price pattern. We have price action confirming a potential reversal. But one of the key aspects for me in terms of playing counter trend trades is this idea of momentum divergence, adding an additional confirmation to the setup. So got that outside reversal. So again, with the Dow here, any move through yesterday's highs, we want to be looking on the long side. And we're going to be targeting a minimum three wave corrective move that should see us up into trend channel resistance. 31,200 will be the initial upside objective. We've got high volume area here as well. So that's going to be the target if we can get through yesterday's uh, yesterday's high. And again, the invalidation point for that would be uh, today's low at the point of entry. Russell, <coughs> similar setup. Again, we've got you, you're going to see a common theme going through today a bunch of outside reversals yesterday. So um, we have a potential double bottom in play. And if we can get through yesterday's high, so through that 1730, we're going to target trend channel resistance up to 1806. And again, we use the day's low if we get taken in on the long side uh, during today's session. The DAX, DAX is a slightly different uh, situation for me uh, in terms of the setup here. We took out that support area that we talked about last week. Now, the DAX has a downside objective here, 11,150. And we have that 61.8% retracement of the uh, post-pandemic advance, 11,220. So what I'd be watching for here is any rejection now back into that prior support area now to act as resistance. Uh, would be a, a signal then to play the breakdown through 11,880. And the target there is that quality objective, yearly S3, 11,150 on the downside. Now, on a weekly basis, if we get a strong close back through this uh, resist, uh, sorry, support area, so back into the range here, uh, 12,400 area, uh, that would suggest a false downside break and likely uh, to see a further extension up into the trend channel resistance. Moving to foreign exchange, and we're gonna start with the dollar here. Dollar had a nice outside rejection yesterday uh, from the ascending trend line resistance. We had a bunch of FIB confluence there as well at 13, uh, 1370s. So I'm, uh, I'm currently short the dollar. And I'm looking to add to short positions on a break through the uh, 112.40 area. And what I'm looking for is a three-wave move to at least challenge that prior high at the, uh, before the upside extension at 110.70s. If we can get through that area, then I'm looking for further extension down into monthly projected range support and the ascending trend line support back into the 107.70s. You'll note that we are, uh, are sitting right at that major weekly trend channel resistance as well. We did obviously break through earlier in the week, but interesting to see how we close. If we close at or below current levels, then we've got a nice outside, uh, we've got a nice reversal pattern on the weekly time frame. And note we have that uh, key momentum divergence in play as well. So uh, that uh, would add encouragement to the idea that we could see a decent corrective swing in terms of the dollar. Note that I use the term correction at this stage. That's all we can think in terms of what's happening in the price action. It's corrective. It certainly um, has the potential to be a reversal, but uh, we wait for further clues and confirmations from price before we go down that route. Uh, the euro dollar. So we are sitting right at the trend channel support. This is the trend channel we've been in all year in the euro. And uh, I'm looking to get long back through the 9760s here. And I'm looking to play a three wave corrective move into the trend channel resistance and this prior support area prior to the breakdown here. So I should see us back into the 9920 area. Then that's going to become a key decision point for the market. Are we going to hold trend channel resistance again and roll over? Or do we have a more meaningful corrective phase uh, developing in terms of the euro? Again, note the momentum divergence as we test the trend channel. We get that outside reversal, taking out the prior two days range. And so that, uh, that's sufficient 
to qualify uh, for a trading opportunity uh, to, as per my trading strategy. Sterling under huge amount of pressure, obviously, with the market's reaction to uh, the UK's uh, somewhat uh, appears to be misguided uh, a policy approach in terms of the, uh, the mini budget. Markets certainly didn't like the idea of this, uh, this spending and borrowing uh, unfunded. And so with respect to sterling, I think uh, the, the balance of probabilities to me suggest that we test parity. I think the mark, that's what the market is uh, smells in terms of the downside. So I'm looking at any three-way corrective move that terminates here at the equality objective, 11080s, uh, bearish reversal patterns there, I, I engage on the short side and look for a move down to test parity. Dollar yen intervention uh, last week, and uh, we're actually trading uh, just shy of the levels where the, where the Bank of Japan intervenes, so not hugely successful. As, uh, as I noted last week, these, these interventions, um, where they're orchestrated uh, by a, a single central bank, they, have a, they don't really have a tendency to stick and, uh, and the market will press against them. Uh, what you want to pay attention to, and this is something we may get further down the track here this year or into next year, is a coordinated central bank intervention. So where we get uh, the G3 or the G5 or the G7 central banks, do coordinated intervention or some type of uh, accord, then um, those are certainly interventions you want to pay attention to, and they often can be major pivots in the market. So for me with the dollar yen, I'm looking for any extension up into this 148 area, as long as you maintain momentum divergence, bearish reversal patterns there, and I'd be looking to engage on the short side, certainly thinking about a move back down to 140, 139 would be the immediate downside objectives. We get through there and we've got that high volume load and this ascending trendline support in this broadening top pattern, which should see us testing to 135. Here's 10 year yields, obviously on, uh, on everyone's radar at the moment, driving the price action really. Um, what we are looking at here is the potential for a wave for low to play out. We get that, we look for another extension to the upside. Might be looking for a move up uh, above 4% again, 4.1% uh, will be the target there. And as long as we maintain momentum divergence, I think then we should see some corrected move from there. And obviously the yields uh, trading pretty much in sync with the dollar yen at the moment. So that's something to pay attention to, that correlation. So if, uh, if the dollar yen is going to hold, it's... Uh, it's Pre, uh, sorry, it's post intervention support area that 140, then we could get that 148, and that would see the yields testing above that uh, or up to that target zone of 4.1%. Euro yen, this is one that I'm paying attention to. We are sitting right at this uh, pivotal support zone in this wedge pattern. So if we can get through or get a close back through uh, 141 here, and I think we've got the potential to, uh, to trade up and retest prior highs and break to the upside to get into the top side of this, uh, this wedge pattern. And uh, certainly I'll be paying close attention to any test towards 148 in terms of Euro Yen. We get bearish reversal patterns there, then I'm going to be looking on the, uh, on the short side and we could think about a move down into trend channel resistance coming in somewhere around 130. Aussie Yen. Similar setup, really, a nice outside reversal. We're getting a nice bullish inside candle developing here. So if that confirms and we take out that high, then we can look for the Aussie yen to extend up. And again, we'd be targeting a move into uh, to test this ascending wedge resistance uh, up into uh, just shy of the, uh, of the 100 level there in terms of the Aussie yen. And once again, if we get up into that area, paying close attention to the price action, and watching for potential uh, momentum divergence to play out. And uh, we look to engage on the short side then in terms of the Aussie yen, CAD yen, similar scenario really, looking at this wedge pattern. So if we can get a break through the pivot, a close through the pivot, then we're gonna look for an upside extension to develop and get a test up into 112 will be the target zone. And as long as we maintain momentum divergence there, and I would suggest we will at this stage, it looks like that. Um, then certainly be thinking about fading that move uh, if we get a bearish reversal pattern from that zone. Moving to the dollar CAD, <clears throat> rejected at the 137.60. Uh, 
this still looks like it has potential to, uh, to run a bit higher here. In terms of the pattern, we could see a symmetry swing support here and look to complete a fifth wave up into that 140 zone. So uh, not, not a clear trade setup there for me in terms of the dollar CAD. The Aussie, similar scenario really. Uh, we are sitting right at uh, some pivotal support here at the 64 area. But unless we can get back inside this, uh, this descending wedge pattern, then uh, I'm not super constructive on the Aussie. And I can see the potential for another leg to the downside to complete a five wave sequence here in terms of the Aussie. So again, we are building some nice momentum divergence. And as long as that's maintained, uh, if we can get back into the, uh, the wedge there, then I certainly would think about intraday long setups, but uh, any new low in the Aussie, as long as we maintain that momentum divergence could be an opportunity on the long side. Uh, the dollar yuan, sharp rejection from those prior highs, interesting level there, that's 719. I uh, talked about that last week. So um, at this stage, if uh, if this if the dollar one starts to roll over, that's going to add some weight to the dollar index, which is my preferred vehicle, obviously, for paying uh, some near-term dollar weakness. Gold, also interesting. <clears throat> nice outside reversal yesterday. And we get this nice bullish inside candle holding the mid of yesterday's range. So again, for gold, I like this on the long side through yesterday's high. So something through 1670s, I'm going to be looking to engage on the long side using today's low as an invalidation point. And the first target is going to be a move up into this trend channel resistance into the 1720, 1730 areas, the target there. Note again, some nice momentum divergence on this last push to the downside. Uh, crude oil. Not much to, uh, to do here. We are trading, uh, we trade down into the 76 target area. Um, the next level I'm watching now for crude is actually going to be 73.60s on the downside. Uh, I don't really like playing it um, to the long side unless we get a close through this trend channel resistance, which, uh, which appears pretty uh, pretty firm at the moment. Um, there isn't a setup for me as such. I tell you, one, one pattern I would watch here is if we can get a move through that resistance up into monthly range resistance again, back into that $90 zone, then any pullback that holds support into that 80, uh, 81, 82 area, then we could have an inverse head and shoulder scenario and set up a move then back up into the late 90s. Uh, but nothing for me to do there at the moment in terms of crude. I'm gonna wrap it up with Bitcoin. We still are seeking that 12,185 downside objective. Any move into this uh, trend channel resistance now and in the interim uh, 21,000, I watch for bearish reversal patterns there as an opportunity to, uh, to look to get in for that test down to uh, the 12,185 area. Like I say, uh, as we're holding this trend channel resistance, uh, can't get constructive on Bitcoin personally, unless we take out 25,000 uh, 300 on the upside suggests a more meaningful low in place. So that completes this week's whistle stop tour of the markets. In terms of the opportunities I'm looking at, I'm paying really close attention to these outside reversals in some of the key instruments, the equity markets, the dollar, gold, the euro are all on my radar. And I'm also paying attention to that euro yen as well. And uh, the Aussie yen uh, tend to, to trade in sync with risk sentiment. So if we're going to get a push higher in terms of equities, we'd anticipate the Aussie yen and the euro yen also would see a nice little pop in line with that move. But waiting for that confirmation. And, uh, and for those in the, the Facebook group, I'll be posting a uh, pre-market trade plan shortly, giving some intraday levels I'm paying attention to in terms of, uh, in terms of the S&P 500 and how you can uh, you can use those to minimize your, your risk reward setup. Oh, sorry, to maximize your risk reward setup. Or for those swing traders, like I say, playing those daily breaks and using uh, the day's low as an invalidation of stop is, uh, is another smart way to do it if you haven't got time to be at the screens. Um, so are there any questions? Would anyone like me to take a look at an instrument I haven't covered? Uh, Steph, US 30 H1. Let's go here. Um, the CME provide order flow information for the indices, Stephanie, not, uh, not Tickman. 
Um, Dow Jones, so the YM here. Let's move it. <coughs> so the setup in terms of the, the one hour chart here for me would be, uh, let me just draw this in for you. So we have this range to the upside, like so. So another important factor is we get the PCE uh, data tomorrow. I think that's gonna be the next catalyst in terms of a major directional driver for these markets. Um, if that comes in on the light side, I think we can see a rally in the markets. However, if it comes in on the hot side, uh, then I think we can see a meaningful sell-off. So I'm anticipating today to be a bit of a balancing type day, consolidate, and then, it, like I say, if we get uh, favourable PCE data, then I look for an extension up into this low volume area and weekly projected range resistance, 30,500 in terms of the Dow Jones there. Obviously, if we take out um, the low here, uh, 28,860, so if we get a hot number tomorrow, then I'd anticipate we break down. Next downside targets will be weekly projected range support 28,200 and the weekly S2 just below 28,150. Any other questions? Okay, I can't see any other questions coming through at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to uh, hope that we are all on the same page, no problem, Steffi. And um, as always traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.